so clogged, in fact, that light won't even shine through it. The other opportunity to go around puddles, not through them. I know. Good day, folks. It's DIY Guy One Two Three here, bringing you another do-it-yourself video. Today we've got a Rhino Seven Hundred, and this belongs to a friend of mine. And he said the over-temperature light keeps coming on. Now, when he drives it, and he drives it medium speed and low speed, no problem. But when his partners drive it, his friends and relatives and whatever, and they drive it max speed, the over temp light comes on. Well, I'm gonna tell you a bunch of things that can be causing that to happen. It's not, uh, it's not straightforward. Now the easiest things are to check for if there's coolant in the reservoir and lighting's not the best, but I'll just show you. I'm on, on the left hand side of the machine here. And there's the coolant reservoir and it's actually low so that's the first thing to check is why you know make sure you've got coolant there and also uh, open your radiator cap when it's not hot and not running and it should be full or pretty near full and we have some air there now my lovely assistant can you go start it let's go turn the key and start it like that and I want you to see what's going to happen. If the water pump impeller is actually turning, you'll see fluid do that. Well, you'll see what you can see is it's really low on coolant. And the radiator, in this case, since it's so low, as soon as it starts, the water pump draws on the fluid on this side draws it right down. So of course the fluid, the fluid drops quite severely. If you are at high RPMs, it's possible that you could be drawing water through the system instead of coolant. But the nice thing about that test is even though it's low right now, the nice thing is I know the water pump impeller is working. And that's one of the common, I don't know about common, but that's one of the problems I've learned about is that there's uh, on the cover that holds the water pump impeller, the water pumps on one side of it and there's a shaft that goes through that cover and on the inside where the engine oil is in that compartment there's a there's a shaft that attaches to something and there's a part that can break off i forget what it is and it can break off and lodge in that inner shaft and make it so that shaft doesn't turn reliably so that's one thing but we've ruled that out because we saw as soon as we started the level of the radiator went right down now if your system is full of coolant you may need to drain off a half a liter or so to make some, you know, basically make a void in the radiator like, like I've got because it's low and then start it to see that fluid change. But if it changes, you know the impeller is working. Okay, so I am pretty confident it's low and why is it low? Well, I'm guessing it overheated. Well, I know it overheated because the overtemp light came on, but I'm guessing that happened because the radiator gets plugged because I hear over and over again, oh, we ran it through the mud and now the overtemp light's on. Why Yamaha wouldn't raise the height of this radiator so that it's higher and not gonna be, you know, clog, clogging up with mud so much and why they wouldn't make it easier to clean, I don't know, but they didn't. So uh, I'm about to take the radiator out, but before I do that, I wanna tell you about some other things that could be causing problems. So you could have an airlock in your, uh, in your system and uh, you have to open up. There's a bleeder screw, I think it's this one right here right on the top of the water pump housing. You pull that out and run the engine with the overflow and the rad full until fluid comes out there. Then you put that uh, bolt in. And then on the other side, there's one right here. And this is a bleeder outside the thermostat, on the top of the thermostat. So basically if you're vapor locked or you have water in the system, uh, you know, you'll, you may not be circulating coolant. You may just be, be I was going to say circulating air, but the, the water pump wouldn't even push the air around. So you want to make sure that every time you change the coolant, you bleed the system to make sure you get all the air out. So if there's air in the system, that could be causing a problem. Also, there's a sensor right behind, right in there. Sorry for the poor lighting. Right in there, that green connector. And that is the temperature sensor. So it's right by the thermostat. That wire comes up, curls around here into the wire harness and disappears. If that wire is broken or intermittently broken and you wiggle this while the key is on but the engine is not running, if that causes your over temp light to come on in the dash right over here, then you know you've got a broken wire and you can fix it or a corroded connection. Sometimes those connectors 
get corrosion in them and that can be a problem too. So wiggle that all around, see if the red temp light comes on and take care of the problem that way. Additionally, there's a spec at what temperature you can test that sensor. So if you take it out and put it in hot water, at what temperature there should be a certain resistance. Uh, but that's something to check because if your temperature sensor is faulty, maybe the engine's not overheating at all and your computer is thinking that it's hot, but it's really not. So it could be a sensor problem. Second thing, the thermostat is in here. Now, normally thermostats fail open, which means they run open, they don't close, which means coolant circulates all the time, which means it'll take a really long time for the engine to heat up, or it may not even be able to heat up. So that's normally what happens, but sometimes they fail shut. And if they fail shut, coolant won't pass through the radiator. It will cause just the same coolant to circulate around the engine, and it will overheat the engine. So that's uh, one other you know idea that you could check if you're having problems. I've also read that having the engine crankcase too full of motor oil will cause the engine to work really hard. And I can imagine if the pistons have to keep sla sloshing the oil out of the way for them to move down, then you know that could cause a problem, I guess. A leaky, uh, a leaky air intake system could cause a lean condition. So if we have a problem with the boot between the, like basically the, I, I guess this is probably fuel injected, yeah. Uh, between the fuel injection housing and the intake, if this boot was leaking, extra air could be getting in there, causing a lean condition, causing it to, uh, to run hot. The other thing too, I've read from a number of people, they're saying, if you're driving slow on a trail, um, go into low range. So that keeps the engine RPMs higher and that causes the water pump to spin faster. And even though the engine's revving higher, it's not really under as much load. So it shouldn't be generating, you know, shouldn't be generating more heat because it's revving higher and with the water pump spinning faster it improves the cooling i am skeptical that that yamaha designed a system to really need that to be the case however it's it's something that i've read that people do and they've said it works for them another person i read talked about having a collapsed radiator hose where even though the water pump was spinning the radiator hose was old and you know kind of soft and it would collapse on the side that is under uh, under vacuum towards the air towards water pump uh, so that's a possibility too you could have a clogged air filter i would think that would cause a rich condition but maybe it's it would be overheating not just because of rich or lean but because the engine's just struggling next would be having low compression and that uh, could be because your engine is worn out or maybe you just have a valve adjustment that needs to be done so that's definitely something that you should check is a valve adjustment and you could have a dirty rad and a dirty oil cooler and a the water pump itself they can have tangs that are used to splash the coolant around those tangs can break off or wear off your fan might not be working so you want to check that your fan does in fact operate and in this case uh, or there's a fan a cooling fan circuit breaker that could be a problem and a fan relay as well so all those things could be you know contributing to an overheating condition uh, oh also a head gasket that's bad can cause consumption of coolant and uh, that can cause overheating as well Okay, so here we are. Here's the front of the radiator, and yep, there's some mud on it for sure. Maybe, I don't know, 30% plugged. But if we look at it from the back, the part that you couldn't see because the fan was in the way, we're more like 80% clogged. So clogged, in fact, that light won't even shine through it in most... Oh, that, that's part it can, but like... Light won't even shine through in most of it. So, yeah, pretty sure that's not good for cooling an ATV or a UTV. Really, I, this is frustrating because these things should be easy. I shouldn't have to remove the radiator to clean it. But anyway, that's what I'm going to do. I'll be, actually, I'm going to be uh, probably soaking it because I don't think it will just clean with the, you know, garden hose easily. The only way I was able to clean the mud out of this radiator was by using compressed air. 
I used an air compressor to blow it out. I tried uh, running thousands of gallons of water over this by putting it in a, like the discharge from a culvert. We've had a rain yesterday and this culvert runs not at any great pressure, but the, the, the volume of water is astonishing. There's just thousands of gallons, gallons an hour that would spill down on top of this radiator and it didn't do a thing to dissolve the caked on uh, clay that was in there. So what I ended up doing is using a, an air compressor with a nozzle like this, which kind of like a fine output nozzle. I was really careful to not bend the fins on the radiator because they are very fragile and they can be bent even with your finger or your fingernail pushing on them. So to reinstall, you basically slide the radiator in, not from this side, I brought it in from the driver's side and brought it through the engine compartment this way. And then I hooked up this hose right here, this hose that goes to the overflow tank the main hose on both sides with their clamps and then the four bolts on each side. Now the bolts are different lengths and I think as I recall the long ones go in the back and the small, short ones go in the front. So I hooked that up and then there were two bolts right on the top there that held the radiator in place and they have washers on them. So after hooking that all up I filled the radiator right up to the top and I filled the overflow tank right to the top and then I lifted the vehicle before I even started it probably not necessary but I have a chain hoist here and I lifted the front end way up in the air like quite extreme any air hopefully purged and went into the went into the radiator and started it up and let it idle for a bit and after I don't remember actually I left for a little bit came back maybe 10 minutes or so the fan came on and then went off on and off and it seemed to be cooling and the over temp light wasn't coming on so I'm quite comfortable that it is um working well but to bleed any air out of it there's a bleed screw so you you undo that until air comes out and then also right there on the top of the water pump housing right there there's another bleed screw and you undo that until air comes out and once you do that the system's bled and then you want to check your radiator level and um, ensure that it's it's topped up and really it's going to take a few cycles of heating and cooling like full hot cycles to press any air out of the radiator down in the overflow tank and then it's going to cool and instead of drawing air back in it's going to draw liquid in from the overflow tank it's going to do that take a few times before all the air gets purged and you'll know your true level of coolant and at that time you want to set your uh, coolant height in the overflow tank and then forget about it because it's all done so my advice to you is, uh, I know this isn't going to be popular, but if you have the opportunity, go around puddles, not through them. I know. And if you do go through them, um, make sure that you'd wash the radiator off and you have to really make sure that radiator is clean and working properly. Otherwise you're going to overheat. And in this case, it's very clear. The only way to clean the mud was to remove the radiator because it was not cleanable from one side. You had to get at it from both sides. So good luck with your do-it-yourself projects. I hope this was helpful in helping you diagnose uh, whatever it might be where your vehicle's overheating. All right, catch you down the line.